Hi, my name's Emma. I'm one of the tissue viability nurses here at the University Hospitals Plymouth. Thank you for watching. Today we are going to do a video all about pressure ulcer categorisation. But first we're going to go through the asking bundle. So remember, prevention is always better. And to prevent pressure ulcers, we need to think about all these things. So thinking about our asking and we're asking the question, how can we help prevent pressure ulcers? So pressure ulcer categorisation can be really difficult, so hopefully by the end of this video you should be able to work out how to categorise your patient's pressure ulcers. Now pressure ulcers are the only things that you categorise. We don't categorise any other wound, it's only pressure ulcers. So there are four different grades and then we have two other cheeky ones. So category one is red pink intact skin. So I'm going to introduce Seymour now. Seymour here has got a few, quite a few pressure ulcers. Um, so on here you can see that he's got a category one. So it's red pink intact skin. So these used to be gold grades but now we call them categories. On Caucasian skin this is quite easy to recognise because the skin is intact, there's red pink um, erythema to the skin. However if you've got a patient who is black, Asian or an ethnic minority then actually this can often be quite hard to see and sometimes we don't tend to find that these patients have got damage until quite a lot later on. So make sure if you are, if your patient is at risk and you are concerned to put those interventions in place like repositioning your patients. But for Caucasian skin, red pink intact skin is category one. Category two, and it's quite hard to see on here, so I've got a lovely little picture here. So category two can either look like uh, superficial skin loss. Um, it can either look like superficial skin loss. So on Seymour here, you can see that it's just this top layer of skin that's come off. So it can either look like a fluid-filled blister or it can just be that top surface that's come away. So that's why it's really important to make sure that you use your slide sheets because this can often look the same. So you can see the top layer of skin that's come off. Um, with all the patients, you must make sure that it is over the circular, bony prominent, and that's what categorises it as a pressure ulcer. You can get two types of pressure ulcers. You can either get them over bony prominent, so you can see on Seymour here, you've got it over his sacrum. You can get it on the ischial tuberosities here, the hip bones, but also think about your knees, uh, your ankles, the malleolus, they can often have pressure ulcers, or the spine, but also you can get device-related pressure ulcers. So they can be from anything from a, an NG tube or a mask that the patient is wearing, ECG dots or even something like TEDS. So remember whatever you're sticking to your patient can cause pressure ulcers so make sure all your devices are moved. But with over a bony prominence they are circular and again it will be over the bone where the patient sits or lies. So that is category two. Then we have category three. Now category three, we always think of threes and fours as being these massive wounds, but actually think of a three or four can be quite superficial if it's on a nose or the side of an ankle. Um, so category three, find my category three on Seymour here, uh, it looks like a nice chunk that's missing out of the skin. The edges are really important here and you can see that the edges are quite rolled, um, but you can't see any deeper structure. So you can't see any muscle, bone or tendon to make it a higher grade. So it's a nice chunk out of the skin there. And you can see on my picture here, and you can see about the level of depth that these that this ends up going. And you can see on this picture here, if it is over a, a, a bottom, um, then actually this can be quite significant in depth. But again, you can't see any deeper structures. Then we've got our category four. So category four, you have to have exposed muscle, bone or tendon to, for it to be a true category four. So on Seymour here, you can see that we've got bone at the bottom here that makes it a category four. And again, do remember that a three or four doesn't have to be really deep, but you will see those structures underneath. Um, so that makes it a category four. So we can see on here, on this one, that you can see that we've gone right down to bone here and on this patient you can see muscle and you can see bone. Then we have two further grades. So we have our ungradable. So this is our ungradable. It's ungradable because we don't know how deep it goes. There could be bone underneath or it could be quite superficial. So if unless all of your wound bed is visible, you have to say it's ungradable. Um, so it can either have a sluffy cap over the top or it can have a necrotic cap over the top. Um, and you can see on here, on this picture here, because we can't see how deep it is, we have to call it ungradable. Uh, and then we've got our final category, deep tissue injury. Now deep tissue injury can look like a purple bruise, but when you 
press down on here, this skin won't blanch back. The skin will feel um, mottled. It won't feel it won't feel nice. Uh, this patient will have probably have had a long lie previous to this. Um, so these patients are particularly at risk because we don't know whether this is going to ulcerate down or whether it will disappear. So we really worry about our deep tissue injuries. And you can see on here, um, we have no idea the depth of the um, of the pressure ulcer when it's a deep tissue injury. So it's purple discoloration, it's deep tissue injury. Thank you very much for watching the videos. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us at Tissue Viability. We've also got really good links on our website. There's also really good links on the trust page for pressure ulcer prevention. So if you have any questions, please contact. Thank you very much for watching.